Okay. So your brother. So we are. It's six months. Six months to the day since we started Megillat uh, Ruth, and today, Bezrat Hashem, we are going to finish Megillat Ruth. Right on schedule. Right on schedule, and we're going to uh, start uh, Sefer Shmuel, Shmuel Aleph, and uh, God willing, um, we'll uh, we'll have sushi when we finish Shmuel. Um, <laughs> we are uh, we really on the last pasuk, which is Ruth uh, chapter four, pasuk Chavbet uh, twenty two. 422, uh, but we're going to go back a uh, few psukim just to uh, go through the uh, annals of uh, David the Melech, all of the toldot, all of the uh, his ancestors, where he came from. We are in the date of the bris of David the Melech's grandfather. His name is Oved. This is when they called, they, they gave him a name, the, the neighbors gave, gave him a name. Uh, what happened is um, Boaz uh, died nine months ago, and uh, Ruth and Naomi, Ruth carried the baby to term, uh, and Naomi helped her around, uh, and um, they're distraught in a way. They're very, very sad, obviously, by the fact that the father of this great boy uh, is not uh, with them. Uh, How do we know that Boaz died on the day of his... That's the medrash is telling us, and he's bringing some. We, we, we discussed that you when it. Yeah. you enjoyed the, the land of Israel at the time, so you know yeah. there's uh, there's a cost. There is a, there is a cost for it. <laughs> uh, but anyway, no, ask away, no problem. So, um, so we are. Um, uh, so they they on the one hand very upset, on the other hand they're holding on to this boy uh, for comfort. Um, Naomi, we're told, uh, took the boy uh, as, as a nanny, full-time nanny, uh, and was holding him the whole time instead of just leaving him in the, uh, in the crib uh, or with some, you know, uh, some toys. Kinder. Kinder toys, yeah. You know, uh, uh, so uh, she was uh, really uh, uh, drawing a lot of comfort from him. And uh, they were so... Uh, Taken or you know not really focused, so they didn't couldn't even come up with the name, because Ruth was saying let let's call him after one of your sons, you know Machlon, the one that I was married to before, and she said no, let's call him after Boaz, your husband, you know. So they each uh, were were campaigning for the other name, and they were so so the the, the neighbors took over, and at the day of the bris they called him a different name, called him Oved. You know, after Oved Hashem, so um, may God uh, uh, make his life easy and uh, and, and uh, help him out in, in Avodat Hashem, uh, which turned out to be the case. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to read those the the ten ancestors of David, and then we're going to uh, exp- we're going to try to drill into some of them and see a couple of uh, very interesting points here. Uh, because the story really ends, um, the story really ends before. Um, where does the story end? It ends on Pasuk Yudzain, um, where they called the name of the boy Oved, which is the father of Ishai, which is the father of David. So here we could have ended the Megillah, really. Uh, nonetheless, we didn't. There are five more Psukim, and uh, Shmuel and Navi, who are we gonna we're gonna start learning his uh, third book. Um, second book actually um, uh, later today um, continued the Megillah and wrote the uh, uh, the history of of the uh, of all the people that David Amalek came from for the sole purpose of legitimizing David Amalek. David Amalek came from uh, uh, Ruta Moavia, hence. There were rumors and there were talks, and people were not, uh, you know, were trying to throw him under the bus uh, and not uh, uh, not grant him the uh, uh, the to be the, the the great the greatest leader, the status of, of the legitimate status, uh, which will allow him to lead the Jews. Uh, so on the spot, more or less, this is a short book, four chapters. Shmuel sat down at the end of his life and wrote this book, 
and uh, he, he sums it up with the justification for the status of David Amelech. Vele toldot paretz, paretz olidet chetzron. This is the um, uh, the toldot, the annals, the uh, how do you say toldot? Uh, last last time I asked already. Anyway, um, genealogy. the genealogy of of of, uh, of David Amelech. So paretz generations. Peretz uh, gave birth to Chetzron, Chetzron olided Ram, Ram olided Aminadav, so Chetzron gave birth to Ram, Ram gave birth to Aminadav, Aminadav olided Nachshon, and Nachshon olided Salma, so Aminadav gave birth to Nachshon, and Nachshon gave birth to Salma, Salmon, which is the same name as Salma, um, gave birth to olided Boaz, and Boaz olided Oved, so he gave birth to Boaz, and Boaz gave birth to Oved, and Oved olided Yishai, and Yishai olided David, so that's the end of Ruth. Now, um, so let's talk, uh, we're going to jump around, let's talk a little bit about Ishai. Ishai um, was a gentleman that shouldn't have died. He was so perfect, he was so pious, he was so special that the, the rabbis are telling us he should not have died. The only reason he died is because everybody dies. It's because the, you know, the, the, the sin of the uh, of Etzadat, of the, uh, the tree of knowledge, um, that brought uh, death to the world before that death was not uh, did not exist. This uh, ent- this, this uh, entity of death didn't didn't exist in the world, um, and uh, the sin brought it up. And Ishai had to go through it just like everybody else. But he is the f- the father of David, who is the father of our Mashiach, and Mashiach will remove death from the world. So he had in his DNA the status to remove the death from the world, had the world married it at the time, which it didn't. Uh, Ishai is coming from the word Yeshut, existence, because had we didn't sin, or Adam didn't sin at the, in Chava, at the time of the Chet uh, Sadat, Ishai would be still here. He is an existence, uh, it's an entity that cannot really um, uh, part from the world. Uh, on its own, he, he just, it's, it's sort of unjust that he left us. Um, now, um, the Targum, when, when we mention here with Salmon Olidet Boaz, the Targum is, is translating all of the names, it translates like the names, with the exception of Boaz. Boaz, it translates as Ivtsan. Okay? Ivtsan is a couple of judges before Shimshon, Shimshon Agibo, right? Um, he was a couple of judges before, and, and it's the same person, according to the Targum, and according to most others, is the same person as Boaz. And he had both names, because he took care of two things. Ivtsan is, signifies the word Av Tzon, the father of the flock, father of the sheep. Because the Jewish people were wandering around, not in the desert, but were sort of uh, without, without a leader, um, and we were oppressed by neighbors, and he took care and became the father of, of, of this flock. And Boaz, which is in him, there is strength, there is might, mighty. So because he was praying in a mighty way to convince God to break the famine and to forgive us, to forgive our sins, and to, um, and to bring uh, prosperity to the Jewish people. Now, Boaz is the gematria of, if you count all the words, it's 80. Because that's the number of psukim that we have in Megillat Ruth. So we have Boaz psukim in Megillat Ruth. Um, all of the psukim starts with the letter Vav with the exception of 8. 8 to signify the, the covenant, the Brit, that, um, that we are finishing on with, with Oved, the day of the bris. That, um, that he, uh, t- to signifies that the status of David Amelech is the status of the Brit, of the covenant. Of she came mm-hmm. in and joined the covenant, and the, her son went through uh, uh, the Brit at eight, eight days old, and um, there, what? How do you get 80? 79. What? What? How do you get Boaz. Eight, eight. Boaz is 80. Bet and Zion makes nine. Ayin may be 70, and 70 so and that's Vav. 79. Oh, yeah. No, the Vav doesn't help you. No, that makes too much. Boaz, Ayin is 70, Bet, 
Oh, no, no, it's Boaz without, yeah, Boaz without the Vav. It's 79. And with, is, 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 is 79, and there is the plus the Kolel, plus one number for the whole word. That's how they do Gimatriot. Uh, okay. I did not make I it know, up. I was thinking, I Did not make also. it up. What do you say all the Pesukim started? With the letter Vav, with the exception. What? Like what does that mean, all the Pesukim start with the letter Vav? No, like all the Pesukim of the Megillah starts oh. with the letter Vav. You can, you can check it, with the exception of eight Pesukim. Really? Yeah. And he was eight years old, too. Right? And he was eight years old, right. He was eight years old when he Did passed away. Um, so um, the, the, there are three moments that I wanted to, uh, to mention. There are three moments, that, three moments in history that connects to David Amela. There is one moment that happened in Sdom and Amora, right after they were destroyed by God, and... Um, Lot and his two daughters <coughs> were saved by, by the angel, uh, by the angels. Uh, his wife, uh, you know, died on the way and, uh, during the run. And uh, then uh, they all thought, the bo- all three of them thought that the world was destroyed, was gone. Had they waited a very little bit, they would know that the world did not end. And, you know, they, they can, the, the, the girls would be able to find eligible people to get married to and, and have, you know, normal family, but, but, no, not, no, anyway, but, uh, so, so had they waited a few minutes, really, or a short period of time, hours even, um, they would discover in the morning that, uh, you know, the world was not uh, destroyed, but they didn't, so it was like a minute that was, that Almost, had they not had the, the relationship, Ruth would not be born because Ruth is uh, the great-great-granddaughter of, uh, of Lot. Uh, and uh, the world will take a different course of, of, uh, of history. Um, a second uh, moment is the moment when Tamar met Yehuda. Again, Yehuda didn't really want to have a relationship with her. He did not go with that in mind. And uh, God sent an angel, and the angel, the angel of uh, desire, and he made it. Uh, he he got him. He got him to to do what uh, uh, to have a relationship with her. And again, had and then she was she was uh, led to the stake to be burned because she became pregnant and was on she not, wasn't married. And moments before that, she was saved. So again, uh, the moment that caused David Melech to come about, and finally is this wedding here that we had nine months ago with Boaz and Ruth, a um, few hours before Boaz passed away. Again, like by, you know, moments, moment, a moment in history. And the rabbis are telling us that this comes to teach us something very, very important. It comes to teach us that when David will come again, the Mashiach will come again, if the moment will be ready, if the, if, if the moment comes, it, it's, it's not going to wait. It's, not, uh, it's just going to happen. No matter how unlikely it is and how strange it would look like, it will happen and it will come. So that provides us comfort. What? The least, least yeah, when you least expect it, 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 will, it will show up. So that is, uh, and, and uh, those moments teaches us that, you know, it happened before, you know, this, uh, th- those uh, amazing uh, arrangements of God, you know, that uh, exactly things lined up at the right time in the right place. Um, another thing that we, lo- that we learned from the entire book of Ruth is how much um, the, the Judaism uh, is, is appreciating and supporting and um, uh, uh, Valuing the the gerim, the, the the gerim uh, oh. converts. Okay, um, they left they left everything. They left uh, many times, uh, you know, going to nothing, and uh, uh, join us. What? They leave their family, the family and the, they left, uh, you know, their their the history and their their path in life, and they arrived at us. And uh, um, we are not a religion that is going out to look for converts. We, some, some religions are encouraging conference. We're not. We're discouraging it. But once they come, they are loved. You know, they're full on, 100%. No second class citizens. You know, they're, we're taking them fully and wholly. And, and uh, the rabbi says, he who, who is uh, 
um, you know, act nicely uh, in a, with, a, with charitable, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, mercifully, what? Um, to, to the, to the girl, God is going to do the same to him. Did you say that you're supposed to treat him even better than your fellow? Yes, people? yes, you have to treat him even better because there should not be any, um, any doubt or hint that he is different. Any doubt or hint that, you know, that uh, his past renders him uh, something different than all of us. Inferior, exactly. Um, there, there, there is a, an interesting analogy um, in, 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 the, in, in Mamare Chazal that you have a, a flock of, of sheep and it's a sheep that belongs to the, to the family. Uh, they purchased them, they grew them, they raised them and all. Uh, and then uh, they find one under, you know, just wandering around that doesn't belong to them and that one joined the family and just, you know, became one, one of the rest. And because it wasn't purchased and was not raised from birth, it, it, it has some, you know, when you find something and it's, it, you, have, you have more value, you like it more, I, I really meant to have it because I found it, I didn't even purchase it, I found it, so, so that's... Uh, and obviously we know that Avraham was called Ger, and Moshe was called Ger, and uh, David was called Ger, and even Yitzhak and, 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 and Yaakov were called Gerim. Uh, Lagur, they, came to, they, not, they didn't come to dwell, they came to as, as converts in, in, in the land. That, uh, so, um, and th there is uh, one more thing, that uh, the, the Ger is mentioned 28 times in the Torah, <coughs> and how you're supposed to treat them nicely and uh, with respect. Um, the same amount of time that Shabbat is mentioned, and the same amount of time that uh, idol worship is mentioned to, to refrain from idol worship. So it's, uh, it's what, 28, Koach, 28 times. So it's three times Koach, 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 Koach. It's uh, in order to, uh, uh, to support the, the called Meshartim, uh, the called of, of the, uh, there, there are many, many different uh, ways that we, that we are referring to the beginning. Anyway. Um, before we finish, I just want to uh, mention a couple, couple other interesting tidbits here. So, there is a pasuk at, um, with Avraham. When Avraham was uh, 90 something years of age, God uh, promised him uh, uh, that uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, he's going to get uh, uh, offspring and they're going to. Uh, he's, he's, he, his wealth is going to grow, and you know his, his nation is going to grow to be a big one. And he says, "Well, my Avraham, Hashem Elokim, what are you going to give me? I'm going alone. I'm, I'm old. I don't have kids. Uben Meshek Beiti, and and uh, my my the, the son that uh, of my household, it's the Meshek Eliezer. I don't have kids of my own. And then there is the next pasuk, seemingly repeats itself." And Lilo Natatazera, you didn't give me any uh, offspring, any any um, uh, kids, children. Vine Ben Beiti or and the son of uh, the, the, the the person that lives in my house is is uh, inherits me. You know, is going to take my. So this uh, it, it says the same thing. Why do we need two of them? And I never understood it. And and according to the Pshat. Ben Beiti, the, the son who lives with me, is, is a, a, a domestic Eliezer. He's Eliezer, he's the, he's the slave, the slave who, uh, who, lived, uh, who lived over there uh, with Avraham. But there is a problem with it because he's not, he's not the, in the heir. The heir was Lot. And this is what I discovered the other day, that Lot, Avraham, was, and that's why it's repeated. The first one, the first time, what? Ishmael was not considered his, um, he's from a concubine, he's, uh, he was not considered his, he's not considered his, you know, he's uh, just, uh, was not, uh, was not the chosen one. <coughs> so, um, so th that's what he was complaining, because Ishmael lived at the time already. Um, so the first pasuk is talking about uh, Eliezer, but the second pasuk is, is talking about Lot. The second pasuk is talking about um, his uh, his nephew, right? Avram's nephew is really the, the real heir to to his. What Avram thought is that Lot 
will be the one to have the children that Mashiach will come from. And he was right. Lot had the children that Mashiach came from. So he was worried, you know, so what am I all about? I mean, I'm, what are you giving me? I'm, I'm not... So here we see, that's one of the reasons that Rashi mentions that even though um, David came from Ruth, Shmuel added five extra psukim to give us the lineage from the father's side to show us how David Amelech came from Abraham and from Yitzchak and Yaakov and Yehuda and Peretz and all of the others on the way in order to legitimize this, uh, the fact that we are, that, that the Mashiach, that we are it and the Mashiach is going to come from, from us, with, with whichever side it, 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 it goes through. So that's, uh, that's one, uh, one point. Another point um, is we have, we, we learned in, uh, in Shemot um, about Shifra and Pua. The two, um, uh, um, midwives. midwives, the two midwives who took care of the children in, in uh, Egypt, right? Now, the rabbis are telling us who is Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua were Yochevet and Miriam. And uh, because they acted the way they acted, God rewarded them with special houses. So Yochevet got the house of the Kohanim, of the Levim, right? She had, uh, yeah, Moshe and Aaron came from her, and they brought, you know, she, she, they brought those, uh, that, that honor to her family. And Miriam, Rashi says on the spot, and it's coming from the, from the Midrash, David HaMelech came from Miriam. She got Batei Melucha, she got the, 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 the kingdom, the, 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 house, the, the, the house of royalty, come from Miriam. So now, where is it? I mean, we have, she must have, we have the men listed here. Where is Miriam? So Miriam, Miriam had to be married to one of them, right? So who was she married to? So we know that Miriam was married to Kalev, Kalev ben Yefune, right? Yefune was Chetzron, okay? Chetzron that we mentioned here, the Chetzron only the drum. So Chetzron is the father of Kalev, in Divrei Yamim, it mentions Chetzron as the father of Kalev. So, um, but we see that Kalev, I mean, Chetzron gave birth to Ram. And Ram is not Kalev, or is he? So there, I saw several answers here. Some say that Ram is Kalev. Some say, which they, they, it's not uh, accepted uh, so easily, that she was married to Chetzron first, and then Chetzron died. And she married Kalev, which is the son of Chetzron, which is not really, according to Torah, you're not supposed to marry uh, a son, so you're not supposed to marry uh, a step, uh, you know, stepmother. But I saw today that uh, it's interesting that they say that Ram died without children. And Kalev, she, that, that uh, uh, Miriam was married to Ram. And Ram died without children. And Ram and, and Kalev um, took Miriam after Ram passed away. And Yibemota married her, just like our story here with, with Ruth and, and Boaz. And the son of Kalev is called after Ram. Because as we said, that that's what Yibum does. That, that the neshama of the deceased goes into. So this is how Miriam ended up. You know, tied in here to the to the house of David Melech to to the house of royalty. So that's uh, that's uh, another thing. And the final the final comment I want to make is uh, um, is the fact that uh, we start the Megillat uh, Ruth, uh, the Book of Ruth. We start with Elimelech. Elimelech was supposed to be the father of Mashiach. He was supposed to be the father of the Melech of the king, right? Eli Melech, Eli Melech, right? To me. And, uh, but he left the, uh, when uh, the economic uh, situation in Israel was shaky, he left, he left us alone, he left us to, uh, to our devices, he was worried about his, uh, not sharing his wealth, not thinking, you know, he was worried, he was thinking of himself, and he left, and he died with nothing, you know, ended up uh, dying in, in exile very shortly thereafter, and instead, Ruth, who did the, the other way around, the, 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 she, she did the, the journey 
in the opposite direction from everything, from a, a daughter of royalty to nothing, to coming, you know, barefoot and without nothing, a penny to her name, uh, to the city of, of Bethlehem, and ended up giving birth <laughs> to David and Shlomo and, and, and Mashiach. So, you know, if uh, times uh, are hard, you know, don't, uh, don't give up and don't, uh, don't run away. Uh, I guess that's one of the lessons uh, that we have. And uh, God willing, when we don't look, when the moment is right, uh, we're going to have uh, uh, that moment, the fourth moment in time, and, and Mashiach will come. So, Lechaim, Lechaim, let's just officially finish it. So anyway, recent archaeological now, studies found this town in the Judean desert where the walls are all thrown down outwards and all ground uh, burnt and the soil is not fertile uh-huh. full of salt mm-hmm. nothing can grow and the yeah, yeah, yeah. supposition is so that's that a the meteorite exploded I see the it. Town. Yeah, yeah. And that was the fire and brimstone mm-hmm. destroyed the town that's right. that Greg, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Dragged all the salt from the dead sea into the soil so the soil cannot grow mm-hmm. interesting um, interesting alright I before we start Shmuel uh, I have some unfinished business that I, I, I uh, need to get out, and uh, it's, it really fits as the, 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 the tie between Ruth and Shmuel. Uh, as you know, we, we came from a, a love story between Ruth and, and Boaz, a story that is so un, uh, unfathomable, you know, she's a, a, a beautiful uh, uh, 40-year-old uh, woman, uh, you know, princess, uh, ended up uh, marrying for a few hours the the king, uh, the, the the leader of the Jewish people, who is uh, 80, and um, very coming from totally opposite uh, backgrounds, um, and um, and then we're going to the story of Hana, and, and the, the the first chapter in Shmuel is the Aftara of that we read in Rosh Hashanah, Tfilat Hana, right? Uh, how she daven and she, she asked for a boy and that's what she got, right? So we're going to learn that in detail and it's uh, going to be a whole new way of looking at uh, this coming Rosh Hashanah at, uh, at, at this Aftara. But what we also read on, on Rosh Hashanah on the second day is Akedat Yitzchak. So, and Yitzchak also had uh, uh, an amazing marriage. Now, the reason I'm, it's unfinished because a few weeks or a month ago or so, someone here mentioned a fact that um, Yitzchak and Rivka had a bad marriage, which shocked me at the time. I didn't know what they're talking about. Uh, so I did some research, and I found the source for it. Now, let's just start with the story. On, on, on Shabbos, we, we learn Chassidus here, so uh, we told a story, which you, you must remember, that... Um, that there were two brothers and they were playing outside who's taller and the older one uh, happens to be short than the younger one. So he found an idea. He pushed his brother into a ditch and then he's too tall and says, now I'm taller. And his father looked from the window and saw that and uh, didn't like uh, what he saw. He called the old guy and says, listen, you can disguise, the, the sky is the limit. You can get as high as you want uh, but you don't need to push someone down in order to accomplish that. That's not the way. Now, um, the origin of, the, uh, of this uh, idea about uh, the marriage of Yitzchak and, um, and, um, and Rivka is from a recent commentary, you know, in the past hundred years, not, 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 nothing uh, uh, too old. And uh, in general, it seems to be a sport uh, if you hear, uh, you know, certain st- sermons and, and, and uh, uh, lectures, uh, it's a sport to put uh, Avraham, Yitzhak, and Yaakov down. Uh, the the uh, legitimacy for it is we need to learn from them. And, you know, because we are all, uh, you know, short, so let's push him in a ditch and <laughs> stand tall. And now we are we got Avraham, and Yitzhak, and Yaakov down to our level. Now we can learn from them. Instead of pulling us up, we're pushing them down which I found uh, abhorrent, but, uh, you know, that's, uh, it seems to be a, a national sport lately. Um, so I wanted to address this uh, idea of the marriage of, of Yitzchak and Rivka. And, in fact, 
when you go to more older sources that are, in my mind, more legitimate sources, um, they show exactly the opposite, that this is the epitome of marriage. This is the best marriage that we had, the best marriage we, can, we should learn from. And this is how it goes. So let's compare uh, first, um, it's Avram and Sarah versus Yitzchak and Rivka. Avram and Sarah were very similar. They were, they were blood relatives. I mean, Avram was the uncle of Sarah, right? Um, so they were blood relatives. They were close in age, 10 years apart, which is not terrible. Uh, close in age. They, they grew up in the same neighborhood, right? In the beautiful suburbs of uh, Ur Kasdim. Um, they were both uh, uh, sons of, of idol worshipers that were totally out there. And they learned together and alone and, and came to the realization of, uh, of uh, who, who's, who's the real God in the world, who's running the show. And, um, and they, they both, um, they both uh, were people of uh, very charitable people that uh, brought in a lot, of, a lot of guests into the house, um, converted a lot of people to, to uh, believing in, in one God. They were very similar. You know, you can understand how this marriage can work. But in contrast to that, let's look at Yitzchak and, and Rivka. Yitzchak <laughs> and Rivka were totally opposites, totally opposites. Yitzchak grew up in the, the best, the most spiritual household in the country, the house of Avraham and Sarah, right? And he got the, the, only, best, the, only the only spiritual, right? He got the best education uh, Avraham can master, whatever, which is uh, an amazing. Can you imagine learning Aleph based from Avraham Avinu? You know, it's 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 enormous. Um, he never stepped foot outside of the land of Israel. It was holy. It's called Olat Mima. It was a holy man. Um, Rivka, on the other hand, grew up in the same place where Avraham, you know, in Ur Kasdim. She grew up uh, to, to the the most evil guy in the block, you know. She was uh, really, uh, the, the, the age difference between them is, is 37 years old. Th 37 years, which is very similar to the, to the difference between Ruth and, and Boaz, which was 40 years old. Very, very, uh, very different. And um, at the time that they met, Rivka was a very young, young girl. And um, Yitzchak went already through the Akedah. He, he was at a you know, it's prime spiritually and uh, got to elevate it to a, a level of, uh, uh, you know, of a, of a holy uh, uh, offering to God. It was very special. And when she saw him, she fell off the camel because she was so taken by his, by his uh, holiness and spirituality. And that awe that she had continued throughout their marriage. She... When she, when she felt, when she was pregnant, when she felt that the kids are, you know, that she has, she's having some trouble, that she goes in front of a shul and, you know, somebody wants to go out and she goes in front of a, of a, you know, a house of worship that's not uh, Jewish, somebody wants to go out. And, uh, you know, if it's the same person, that means we, we have bipolar situation here. So what's going on? So she was, and she felt that she needs to, work on finding the answer on her own. It was not, she didn't feel comfortable going to her husband, so she went to the yeshiva of Shem, and over there consulted with the, with the people who, at the time, were running a yeshiva that Yitzchak went to and Yaakov went to. So she felt that she needed to do the, the journey on her own. That's, by the way, the source for those people who said, oh, she didn't want to talk to him, so they had a bad, and they, they had a bad relationship. And uh, later on, they, they disagreed on, uh, on uh, Esav or Yitzchak, who is better, you know. what? Reading so, reading so on the surface and so not, it didn't make sense. Why am I saying it doesn't make sense? Can you quote the pasuk that describes how much Avraham loved Sarah? Anyone? Let me help you. There is no such pasuk. It's not, love is not mentioned in the marriage of Avraham and Sarah. Love is mentioned in the marriage of Yitzchak and Rivka. It says, Vaikach et Rivka, Vatilo Lisha, Vaye Avea. He loved her. Later on it says, 
that Vitzchak mitzachek at Rifai's Torah. He was entertaining her. He was laughing with her. He was joking with her. He was he was happy with her together. In the field? There is what? In the field? In a restaurant? I don't know. <laughs> in a field. Yeah, it was in a field. Yeah, yeah, it was in a field. But so there was a very strong relationship over there, which is which is Torah is telling us. There was a he loved her. Now, what happened to Avraham? Avraham also took Hagar. He took another woman. And when Sarah passed away, he took a third one, Keturah. Some say Keturah is Agar. He remarried, some say he remarried her. Some say it's a different one. But he replaced Sarah with another person, with another woman. Yitzchak never had another woman except Rivka. And when she passed away, he never replaced her. Loyal totally to the end. Couldn't replace her. Was nothing, there was nothing that uh, even come close that uh, would be considered uh, you know, a replacement of, of, Sarah, of uh, Rivka. Now, the story of the Shidduch, or how they met, is mentioned in the Torah twice, at length. The whole story of, of uh, Eliezer going and, and how he found her. First the story goes, and then how he repeated it to Avraham. Now you have mountains of books in the library, in the Jewish library, a lot of halachot, that are hanging on one letter. There is an extra vav here, so therefore, you know, you have a whole bunch of books with a bunch of halachot. <laughs> and here you write chapters and upon chapters just about the shidduch of Rivka, and, and it's not now. How did it all, all come about? There were three people, the rabbis tell us, three people who prayed for something. One of them was Eli of, of, uh, Eliezer, who prayed to find the right girl, right? Another one is Moshe Rabbeinu, when he wanted, he asked God to, at the time of Korach, please intervene and, and, and let us all know what you really think. And God, you know, opened the, 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 the ground, opened its mouth and, and took Korach in. And Shlomo HaMelech, what? I thought you said the other one. No, Shlomo, Shlomo HaMelech, um, Shlomo, in, in that, in the language is in those three are, are, are special. And Shlomo HaMelech, after he built the edifice to God, built the, the Bet HaMikdash, he wanted God to send the fire down to dwell on the altar. And he prayed and a fire came from heaven and dwelled on the altar and stayed there for 410 years. And that was the, um, that was the prayer of, of Shlomo. So the, the, the Navi, which is the most amazing Navi we ever had, the smartest man that ever lived on the face of the earth, they prayed. And, and then we have the, the, the slave who was looking for a shidduch. Now, among those three, the first, I mean, uh, um, Moshe and Shlomo finished their prayer, and then God responded. But with Eliezer, Terim Kilale Daberi, he didn't even finish the davening. He just walked in. After the first Kaddish, it happened. Finished. God, God sent the, the, the right. It's all to teach us how precious and how special this marriage was, how God valued the process. So if we want to learn from something, please, let's not push them into the ditch. Let's not try to make them, you know, as, as uh, cuckoo as we are, or as troublesome as we are, as the, now we can learn. No, let's keep them on a pedestal, keep them where they were, you know, high up. And now the, the Hasidut is mentioning as well that the, the contrast between Yitzchak and Rivka represents is a symbolism of the contrast of a Jew himself, of each one of us. We have a neshama and a guf. Both holy, both, you know, both Jewish, but one cannot live without the other. You know, a neshama cannot walk the, the face of the earth without the body. Um, so what's, what, what's happening is that if we, if we are drawing some sort of an understanding of who we are and how this relationship, how, how the goof has to look up to the neshama, how the neshama needs to schlep up the goof and, and lift it, this is a, a, uh, this is a good marriage to, uh, to cherish and uh, to learn from. And, uh, you know, instead of, uh, of, of uh, you know, stating that they had trouble married, mar in, in their marriage is exactly the opposite. So that's the, that settled that. Now, uh, we have books here, and uh, later on, if you want to purchase one, I'll, I'll, you know, I can give you. I have a box of them. Uh, we're going to start just uh, very, very quickly, and then we'll... Uh
because we have some, you know, we're running out of time, we'll just say the first, uh, the first pasuk, and we'll have a more elaborate in- introduction and all next, next time. So Shmuel, Shmuel Arab. So Shmuel is, uh, he wrote first the book of Shoftim. Then he wrote the book of Shmuel. Then, at the end of his life, before he passed away, he wrote the book of Ruth. Uh, we learned the first one and the third one. Now, the middle one goes through more than his life. Uh, we have Shmuel, Aleph, and Bet. Oh, yes, so we have two books of Shmuel. There used to be one. Uh, I think uh, Christian uh, theologists, they split it for some reason. Because together they're 55 chapters, so it's too much. Now, the fact that Yeshayahu is 66 chapters and they didn't split it up, it's a question. But is, it, is it a logical yes, division? Yes, yes, logical divisions. Logical divisions. The, the, the first one goes through the birth of Shmuel. He is, is, has 31 uh, chapters. And chapter 25, Shmuel passes away. Uh, Shaul continues to rule uh, for the short period of time that he ruled. Brings Shmuel in a science. Bring his what? Seance. 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 In a, in a, his, bring his soul to consult with him on the last, before the last battle, then have the last battle and, and, pass, and dies. That's, that's the end of, 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 of chapter 31 of Shmuel Aleph. Then we go to the life of David, which is chapter, uh, the, the rest, uh, the other uh, 20, uh, 24 chapters of the book of Shmuel Bet. Okay, so there is... Who wrote the... Oh, very good question. So who wrote the rest? So there were two gentlemen. One of them is Gad HaChuzeh, the visionary, who was a prophet. And another one is Natan HaNavi. They continued, as soon as uh, as Shmuel passed away, they took over and continued writing the rest of the book in the same signon, in the same uh, style. style. So it it reads... Is that the Gad of... uh, How that? Is that the guy who put her head down? I don't think so. Is yes, it is. You're right. That's that God. Yeah, by Omar Shemel God. Yes, that's the one. Thank you. Um, Tachman, Tachman, yeah, yeah. Yeah, by Omar Shemel God, Niplan, Abiyad, Rani, yeah. Okay, so yeah, that's the one. Now, um, now, um, Shmuel. Uh, we're going to talk about the history uh, next time, uh, but uh, the point is that Shmuel continued the story of the book of Shmuel after Shimshon Agibo. So if you look at the book of Shoftim, it has 21 chapters. The first 17 chapters go through all the Shoftim, end of chapter 17 is, is Shimshon Agibo. Then the last four chapters are describing those two events Pilegesh Bagiva and, and uh, Pesel Micha, first Pesel Micha, then Pilegesh Bagiva. Those were the events that happened hundreds of years before that, but were the justification to start changing stuff, which will result, which was result, will result in the in the anointment of a king to the people of Israel, which we didn't have before. So, but in terms of chronological order, the Book of Shmuel comes after. Chapter 17, after Shimshon Agibor, this is the life of Eli. Now, Eli was the next Shofet, and Eli was the teacher of Shmuel Anavi. Was the direct teacher of Shmuel Anavi, and because of the respect that he had to have for his teacher, there is very little that's written about him. His sons didn't work out. The sons of Eli didn't work out so well. They were, you know, not. Uh, we'll see very soon. They, they, didn't, they didn't succeed their father. Um, and uh, so, he, he, as a result, we know very little about Eli HaKohen. Anyway, let's read, and then uh, Daniel, you here? You wanna, Daniel is here to share something about Shmuel before we leave, but let's just finish, let's just read the, the first Pasuk. So there was one man from the city of, from the, from the Ramatayim, from those two, uh, two, hi- two hills, Sofim, that, that it's like a, 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 a vision, a place that you can see far away. Sofim. Mehar Ephraim, it's from uh, those two hills that are, are on part of the mountain of Ephraim. This na- the name of the person was Elkanah. 
and his father was Ben Yerucham, Ben Eliu, Ben Tochu, Ben Tzuf, Efrati, was a very important person. We will learn all the details next time. Daniel, please share with us something about Shmuel. Yeah.